So in this last, in the last series of videos on this clamp knurling tool, we built the, uh, the the knurl holders themselves. This time we're going to build the the body, okay, the frame, the whole hold everything together. Um, I'd hope to uh, get get this thing completely done this weekend, but I've had so many family obligations that I wasn't able to do anything on it. Actually, I spent all day today on the roof putting Christmas lights up, so you know it has to be done. But uh, should be able to get to this uh, later in the week, and if not, I have the entire week next week off, so I'll get to it then for sure. But uh, tonight, it'll just take a few minutes, and I'll go over the, the print and point a few things out for you, and, uh, and next time we'll get started making chips. Let's take a look at the print. So here's the drawing for the body in this clamp knurling tool. It's... Uh, Let's see, what's it made out of? It's made out of, looking in the title block, it's made out of 6061 aluminum. Um, I've had people ask, why is it aluminum? Why is, shouldn't it be made out of steel? And Well, the, the reason is, it's, there's no reason to make it out of steel. It's, aluminum is plenty strong for the application and a lot easier to work with. So, uh, let's see, what do we got here? It's aluminum and it's about uh, 6 and 3 quarters of an inch long. It's two and three quarters wide, and where's the thickness? Three quarters of an inch thick. Um, if you notice, I'm going to start paying more attention to tolerancing on my, my projects because it, it's, it's important. Uh, tolerancing makes, makes a part only, it makes a part a lot, a lot less complicated and a lot less, ex, in it, a lot less expensive to make if you're, if, if you're jobbing it out. Um, if you notice all the non-critical dimensions on this part, like, like the outside contour of, of the part, uh, the thickness, um, none of that stuff is critical, so it's all two place dim dimensions. That means it has a tolerance of plus or minus 15 thousandths on it. And uh, the reason I did that, you'll see that I, I just redid this print a little bit tonight. You can see the rev revision is now B. If you have a, re a Rev A print, I would, I would run, I would download another copy and get this, get this latest drawing because what I did is I changed the dimensioning a little bit to locate all the critical features off the center of the part rather than an edge okay and the reason I did that is because I've had questions from people who have uh, who would like to make this for their lathe but they don't have mills and they're wondering if it's possible to make this thing without a milling machine and, and it is um, this part's a little big to mill on a milling attachment on the lathe, so you can get around that by band sawing the thing to shape and belt sanding it instead of milling the outside. It's all just for aesthetics, the outside, so it doesn't really matter. But if you do that, you don't have any machined edges on the outside to locate from, so all the critical dimensions inside have to be located from the center of the part. So that's why I redimensioned this thing. And you see I have, I have center lines on the part now, and they are located from the end of the part and from the edge of the part. And then all the critical dimensions, like these counterboard hole patterns here and the, uh, the slot on the opposite side, are all located from the center line of the part. Okay? They're all referenced to the center line of the part. So that way, if you put it in a lathe, if you mill it in the lathe and a milling attachment, you can mill this long slot for our knurling holders, get that done, then you can use that as a reference to locate the bolt patterns from and the center hole. Okay? Because if, if you've band sawed and belt sanded the outside edge of the part, you can't locate off that anymore. So you have to have another reference to locate from, and the slot works perfectly well for that. So let's talk about this slot. Um, I do have a milling machine, so I am going to be making some of this outside shape on the mill. Um, I'm going to mill the, the two, I'm going to cut out, obviously cut out a rectangle first, and then I'm going to mill the two long edges, get them down to this two and three quarter inch dimension, because that way I'll have um, machined edges to locate off them. So if I want to take the part out of the vise and put it back in, I can do so. Um, one thing, it does have to come out because it has to be flipped because the counterboard holes are on one side of the part and the slot is on the other side, so at some point it's going to have to be flipped. So, um, so obviously the first thing I'm going to do is saw out the rectangle. 
uh, mill the two edges. Um, I'll just belt sand the end to length. That's like I say, it's six and three quarters long, two place decimal. So uh, that's not a critical length. Once I get that done, I will mill my slot. Okay, uh, you see this slot has a fairly tight tolerance on it, plus three thousandths minus nothing. That's to ensure that the neural holders we made fit in here without binding. Uh, the, the length of the slot's not critical. It has a two place decimal, 5.81. So that's not critical. So we'll mill the slot first. Um, then we can either we can pop the hole in the center then or we can wait till we flip it over and do the counterboard holes. Uh, either one. You can see this the diameter of this thing is is pretty loose. It's 2.06 plus or minus 15 thousandths. Uh, okay, once we get that slot in, we'll flip it over. We'll put the the two four hole counterbore patterns in. Again, these are located from the center of the part, so we have to keep track of that. If we, I will run a stop off one end of this part. Doesn't matter that it's belt sanded as long as I work from the same end all the time. So I have to keep track of that. Um, let's see. All right, once I get uh, get these hole patterns in, while the part's still a rectangular shape, I'll flip it up on its on its edge, and we'll put these uh, 5 16 18 tapped holes in here with uh, a spot face on them. We'll pop those in, and then we'll set it up on end, and we'll put this uh, 5 16 18 tapped hole in the end for the adjustment screws to run the knurls, put pressure on the knurls, and force them against the work. Yeah, let's see. Once that's done, we'll take it off the mill. I'll lay out this 25 degree angle here, and we'll take it over the ba band saw and saw it off. Belt sand it to make it pretty. Belt sand all these radii on. They're just a two place quarter inch radii everywhere. And uh, that'll do it. We'll be done. So, like I said, I'd hoped to make chips today, but it didn't work out. So, it's late. It's like, what is it? Quarter after 11, that's getting too late for me to work in the shop. I usually cut off about 10 o'clock because after 10 o'clock I get stupid. I don't trust myself. Um, so um, hopefully I'll get to making chips later this week. If not, like I said, I'll be off all next week for the Christmas holiday. And uh, I'll definitely have some time to make some parts up then. Hopefully we can finish this up. So I guess I'll see you then.